Hello, welcome to the video for what is the material, the texture coordinate node. So this is going to be our example here. It's a brick wall. Basically, I'm using a normal map to give us this little brick texture look. And then I'm using a little simple texture here, blue stripe on the top, white on the bottom, so that we can actually see once we turn on tiling that we're going to tile this multiple times. So when you're using texture coordinates, basically what you're going to do is you're going to alter the UV, the tiling, as well as whichever coordinate system is going to be used by your texture. By default, we have a one tile, zero for the coordinate system. Basically, that means if you're looking at this, we're going to have zero to one for a UV value on the X and a zero to one for the UV value on a Y. So basically your texture is going to map one to one. It's going to look like you expect it to look. Now the issue we come into is what happens if it's not looking the way you want because you've had to modify your mesh. Let's say we took our mesh and we stretched it out. And we'll go ahead and stretch it out a little more and snap it to the ground. We have this much wider brick wall, but now our texture, well, it looks wrong. We don't like the way our bricks look. Well, we could go back in and we could modify our texture itself, decrease the size of our bricks, and we could go ahead and have another texture for this size. Or we can use a modified texture coordinate system and actually shrink down or tile our material. Now, because I have chosen a material that tiles very well, because it's brick and it's intended to fit together, this actually works very nicely. If you have something that doesn't tile very well, which actually you'll see here in a second, you're kind of going to notice this. So let's go ahead and take a look at our texture coordinate node. First thing you're going to notice is it's called text chord, which is very, very annoying because if you typed in text chord, you're not going to find it. It is actually labeled as a texture coordinate node in your coordinate section, but it is shorthanded to text chord when it's in your actual node graph. So if you ever had difficulty finding the text chord node when you're looking at someone else's graph, that would be why. So for our settings, the first one is our coordinate index. Basically, you'll leave this at zero unless you know what you're doing and you're using customized UVs. If you're using customized UVs, this would basically relate to which UV you want it to use. Our second two options are U and V tiling. Basically, this refers to our horizontal and our vertical tiling, and by default, it's set to 1. Right now, this is not plugged into anything. We have an output, which is going to go into an input that matches it, which is a constant coordinate. So right here, for example, if I was to plug this in, we're going to use this coordinate system rather than the default coordinate system that the texture is set up for. By default, it's set to 1 and 1. So let's go ahead and plug these in. And as you notice, nothing changed. Well, that's because we are still using a one and a one. We can change this to a zero or we can change this to a higher number. Basically, it's going to control the scaling. Let's say our bricks were too small and we wanted them larger. Well, we can lower the scaling. Let's lower it by half to 0.5 and 0.5. What this is going to do is it's going to end up scaling both of these textures by half, which is going to end up giving us a much larger brick texture, which obviously is not what we want. But for example purposes, you can see we're only using half of our normal map here, and we're only using half of our texture sample. As you can see, you can't see the right texture sample anymore, nor can you see the bottom. So that's something to keep in mind. Now let's go ahead and let's actually make our bricks smaller. Let's go three and three. Let's try to get some smaller bricks. So we did achieve our result with smaller bricks. Our normal map has been tiled three times and now our bricks are much smaller. Still not what we want, but I'll adjust it shortly. But as you can see, because we are not really using a tiling appropriate texture for our base texture, you can actually see a three by three grid. Well, I did this for example purposes. As you can see, we are now tiling three times in the vertical and the horizontal or the U and the V. And that's because we've told it to tile three times. Let's adjust this to five. 
See if we can get our bricks a little bit not as wide. See what happens. And there we go. We actually have a little bit better bricks. I'd actually like smaller than that, you know. And again, it's adjustable. Let's make it 10. Heck, why not? And basically, you can adjust as needed. The nice part about this is this is a node that you can set up into a parameter and it can be adjusted in an instance basis so that way you can tile it appropriately. So there we go. We actually have something that looks a little bit more like a brick and we no longer have this long stretched out texture, but we are still using the original texture samples in order to create this. We're just tiling it on the X and the Y. Now the other two options are unmirror U and unmirror V, basically unmirror X and unmirror Y. If you have a texture that is already mirrored, this will unmirror it. You're going to know if you're going to need this or not, basically, if you need to use it. If you've created your textures where they are mirrored in the U and the V, you can use this option to unmirror it. And as you can see, this ends up being the result, and it doesn't give us our desired effect. So by default, you're going to want to keep those unchecked unless you're having an issue with your original textures being mirrored, and you need to unmirror them. So let's actually take our texture sample. We'll trap this back to our brick and apply it. And we're actually going to see our actual brick looking effect. We shouldn't have that funky blue texture on top of it anymore. And we have a nice little brick wall now. We've gone ahead and we've shrunken down our tile. And we have something that looks better. If we were to use this in a material instance, we could easily have one material that could cover all of our brick walls. And it could make it where it all looks the same or even slightly different, yet you're using one texture and you don't have to worry about stretching. So that is what our texture coordinate node is and what it does. Basically, it feeds in an alternate UV texture coordinate system into a texture sample or any other node that takes UVs. And it allows you, the primary use would be for multiplying the U and the V to give you a better tiling result. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.